So in this ninth video, we'll be looking at how did Hitler become Chancellor in 1932 to 33. In this picture here, you'll see both Adolf Hitler and President Hindenburg, the man who made him Chancellor in January 1933. So we're looking at the political developments in 1932 to 33 that aided this process. And actually, it is mostly about the role of individuals, including Hindenburg, Brüning, Von Schleicher and Von Papen, the last three all being former chancellors of Germany. And overall, we're looking at how Hitler became chancellor. So what was the situation in 1932? The Weimar public was crippled by economic problems by this point, as they had to deal with the impact of the Great Depression on Germany. The Chancellor Heinrich Brüning was struggling to make the constitution work and was relying on using presidential decrees to rule under Article 48 of the constitution. Although he was the leader of the largest party, the Centre Party, they did not have enough votes in the Reichstag to pass the laws that he needed, so he had to rely on the President to rule. This was largely because the growth of radical parties like the NSDAP and the KPD was growing, but they were still marginal groups. And actually, the Nazis had achieved 18% of votes in the election of 1930, receiving 107 seats in the Reichstag. This was the largest they had ever achieved before, but of the 577 seats in the Reichstag, it was not enough to dominate. But it was more than the Communist Party, the KPD, who had only achieved 13%. And actually, the Nazis were starting to creep up on the more moderate Social Democrat Party, who had achieved 25%. So, significant, but still a minority. Yet, by 1933, Hitler had become the Chancellor of Germany. The first key event was the presidential elections, which began in March of 1932. President Hindenburg was persuaded to stand again, even though he was now 84, and was starting to become quite frail. His supporters persuaded him to stand for another seven years because Germany was in such a crisis they felt that this famous war hero was the best person to provide stability. Campaigning was bitter for this election, which was contested by both the communists and the Nazis who used their personal private armies to try and influence people. Hindenburg, although he was the clear favourite, he did not get the 50% of the votes needed to win outright. And in fact, in March 1932, Ernest Fallman, the leader of the KPD, achieved 5 million votes, which is 14% of the electorate. Adolf Hitler achieved almost twice that with 11 million votes, which is 30% of the electorate. And Hindenburg achieved 18 million votes, 49.6% of the electorate, but not quite enough to win outright. Therefore, another election was held in April 1932, which although Hindenburg won, Hitler was in clear second place. So this time, Fallman's dro votes dropped to 4 million, 11% of the electorate. Hitler's increased by 2 million to 13 million votes, 36% of the electorate. But Hindenburg was the clear winner with 19 million votes, which is 53% of the electorate. But pleasingly for Hitler, he had crushed the communists, achieving, in the end, over three times the votes that they did. So the Nazis were clearly becoming a major force in German politics. The next key event was the resignation of Chancellor Brüning on the 30th of May 1932. Now, in April 1932, Brüning managed to lose the support of the Reichstag. He did this in two ways. First, he decided to ban the SA and the SS to try and stop civil war in the streets, recognising the, the influence they had had in the elections and the problems they were causing. He also announced a plan to buy up land from large landowners to house the unemployed. Now these two measures united the right-wing groups against Britain. The first plan alienated the Nazis in particular, but actually all right-wing groups were private armies, who worried that their private armies would be banned as well. The landowners were also furious. They would have to sell their land, and actually for prices which they felt were unprofitable for them. Now it's this second thing that's probably the most important because one of the most famous la landowners was President Hindenburg, who was furious and refused to support Brüning. So effectively Brüning by this point had lost control of the Reichstag and had lost control of the president and so he had to resign. At the same time as Brüning's crisis, 
a prominent, ambitious, high-ranking army general, Kurt von Schleicher, comes to the forefront. Now, von Schleicher was suggesting a coalition of right-wing parties to rule the Reichstag, with Hindenburg's friend, General Franz von Papen, as its leader. Although this coalition would not have a majority in the Reichstag, Hindenburg agreed to make von Papen Chancellor. And the way that von Schleicher persuaded Hindenburg to do this was he said that von Papen could rule with presidential decree and that if they had the support of the relatively popular Nazi party, they could argue they also had the support of the people. However, they would not have a majority in the Reichstag. So this anti-democratic coalition became known as the Cabinet of Barons as it was felt these high-ranking elites were choosing to rule Germany through presidential decree rather through the dem democratic basis of the Reichstag. Now for the Nazis, it was an opportunity. Hitler agreed to support it in return for lifting of the ban on the SA and the SS and he now got to say that the Nazi party was in government and was starting to influence things at a higher level. Now this shaky coalition lasted until the Reichstag elections in July 1932. The elections in July 1932 saw a turn to violence in the streets with over 100 people killed, particularly with the Nazi party and Communist party private armies clashing. The NSDAP, or Nazis, won 38% of the vote and 200 seats in the Reichstag making them the largest party, but not giving them a majority overall. Hitler demanded that Hindenburg make him Chancellor, as he now led the largest party in the Reichstag. Von Poppen played for time and called another election for November 1932 to try and win more support. Although the Nazi seats did fall to 196, they were still the largest party, and Hitler continues to press for being made Chancellor of Germany. Now, it was after these elections that von Schleicher manages to seize control for himself in December 1932. Hindenburg refused to make Hitler Chancellor. He saw him as a vulgar, jumped up corporal and did not want to give him the highest office in Germany. Von Schleicher told Hindenburg, though, that if von Papen remained Chancellor, there would be civil war as people had voted against him. So, Hindenburg instead made von Schleicher Chancellor in December 1932, but effectively he had little support in the Reichstag or amongst the people, and it soon became clear that he could not rule on his own. Von Schleicher, realising this, asked Hindenburg to suspend the constitution and make him head of a military dictatorship, something which Hindenburg had some sympathy for, not being a huge supporter of the democratic Weimar regime himself. But instead, von Papen makes Hitler Chancellor in January 1933. So rumours had begun to circulate that von Schleicher was about to seize power with a military coup and overthrow Hindenburg. Von Papen went to his friend Hindenburg and persuaded him that the thing to do is to, was to make Hitler Chancellor, but with von Papen as his Vice-Chancellor and with Hindenburg as the President, they could squeeze Hitler and control him between them, effectively ruling Germany themselves. And at the same time, they would benefit from the support that Hitler had in the Reichstag and amongst the people, meaning that they could argue they had a democratic government again. Hindenburg agreed and made Hitler Chancellor in January 1933, less than 10 years after he tried to seize power so badly and failed so badly in the Munich Putsch. So the roles of various individuals greatly helped Hitler. First of all, the failures of Brüning in being the last really democratic Chancellor of Germany. But in particular, Hindenburg, von Schleicher and von Papen all combined to give Hitler power. And they all had a huge impact on Hitler's rise to the Chancellorship. Hindenburg, first of all, never fully supported democracy and was quite happy for various chancellors to rule using Article 48, undermining democracy from day one. Von Schleicher and von Papen were both right-wing wealthy industrialists who wanted to move power away from the Reichstag to a stronger government, 
So again, quite anti-democratic and quite keen for a right-wing nationalist government. It's just none of them foresaw that it would be Hitler who would achieve this. And all three underestimated Hitler and thought they could control him when they clearly could not. So, in summary, the Weimar Republic was struggling in 1932 due to economic problems relying on rule through presidential decree and was worried about the growth of the NSDAP and the KPD. The presidential elections saw a huge rise in support for the Nazi party, even though Hindenburg was eventually successful. In 1932, the democratically elected Chancellor Brüning was forced to resign for his anti-right-wing policies. And von Schleicher persuaded Hindenburg to put in place a coalition of right-wing groups led by von Papen and supported by the NSDAP, which had to rule for using presidential decree due to its lack of support in the Reichstag. The NSDAP then did very well in July and November 1932 elections, and they argued that Hitler should become Chancellor. Von Schleicher briefly becomes Chancellor before von Papen persuades Hindenburg to make Hitler Chancellor and him Vice-Chancellor. Von Papen and Hindenburg hoped to control Hitler whilst benefiting from his mass appeal amongst the people.